Lesson 5.7 of AP Macro is about public policy and economic growth. And public policy is going to be monetary policy, fiscal policy, things that our lawmakers would like to establish when it comes to making the economy better. Now, some things to keep in mind. Economic growth is about GDP over time, and we can show that in the production possibility curve and the long run aggregate supply curve. Determinants of this growth are going to be changes to capital stock and technology. And the way I like to think of it is remember we need full employment, resources, technology to make things grow. And what we learned in lesson 5.6 is this, this capital formation is a lot of time um, indicative of interest rate changes. So we know that if interest rates are dropping, that's going to lead to investment increasing. And if interest rates are low, then people like to borrow, don't they? So supply-side fiscal policy can become very important. Supply-side, remember, can be shown with short-run aggregate supply, which leads to long-run aggregate supply. And that's our businesses, our supply chain, our factories. So, <coughs> excuse me, any kind of fiscal, fiscal policy in the supply side is going to be when we have things like, how do we do it? Increase capital per worker. So the things I was talking about are going to be any fiscal policy, remember, is taxes or government spending. And sorry about that glare. Taxes, of course, if we reduce taxes on our businesses, then they can increase production, store on aggregate supply. If we put government spending into the supply side, that means things like put subsidies into fuel and farms or subsidizing student loans. We have quite a few tools that we can approach public policy with. In order to increase our human capital per worker, we can do things like education and job training. Um, we can The policy for that would be things like tax credits for education, um, student loan forgiveness, subsidies on student loans while you're in school that pay your interest rates, and anything that's going to give you some kind of incentive to get education and training. So that can increase our human capital. Our technology, we can give tax credits for research and development. We can do subsidies for green energies or fossil fuel management, whatever it is that can increase our technology. And of course, we can look at physical capital. And these three things, remember, are our capital stock. So if we have public policy that addresses capital stock, um, government spending on infrastructure right now is a great topic because we have a trillion dollar infrastructure package that's been signed by our government. And that in itself, if our roads are better, things get delivered sooner, if our communications, railroads, all that stuff, infrastructure, um, give companies tax credits for investing in physical capital. Um, you see that all over the place. So the goal with all that public policy, of course, is to raise productivity and also, I'm sorry, goal number two. This is goal number one. And goal number one is investing in our capital stock with public policy and supply side fiscal policy. Goal number two is how do we get this human capital to be more productive and in and or increase our labor force participation rate. Well, we can do things, for example, like raise the age of retirement benefits. And if people are drawing Social Security at 63 years old, we can raise that to 68 years old. And not the most popular version of getting people in the labor force, but that's something that our lawmakers discuss is don't let people get social security until they're older and they'll stay working longer. Um, we can also try to raise the number of people in the labor force with tax credits. And basically those are age requirements. There's some to get people who are younger, who are disadvantaged, and there's some federal programs that have been around for those. Um, we can increase spending on programs for older workers to continue working. And the longer your veteran laborers are in the labor force, the more productive they can be and keep adding to the economy. So those public policy items and, and growth can be addressed in your topic questions for 5.7. So when you get to 5.7, there are some questions and what they're going to ask you is about subsidies. And subsidies on the first topic question on AP Classroom is, remember, a government payment to a certain industry. And are they subsidizing 
employees, remember full employment, are they subsidizing resources, technology? Just think about subsidies and how they apply to public policy and growth. And the next one is government spending on education. This, of course, would lead to growth because our capital stock would increase. And if our capital stock is increasing, then we can have PPC shifting to the right, whatever. The third one is going to be supply side fiscal policy versus demand side. But the trick is they put the word fiscal policy. So that tells us it's not going to be something about open market operations, the Fed funds rate, or interest rates. This is going to be taxes or government spending. And if it's supply side, that public policy is probably going to be lowering taxes or adding government spending to get subsidies or whatever into our supply side to inc increase production. So when you're working your topic questions for 5.7, those are some clues, tips, and tricks.